Hello guys, and welcome to Supreme Ruler Ultimate. Today we have another guide, and this one is going to be on technology, something that you guys voted for pretty highly in the last poll, and that I've received some personal requests for. To start from the very basics, if you go down to your little UI at the bottom left, you'll see there is a research button with a nice helpful picture of a little beaker thingy you go ahead you click that and that's how you get to this research screen right here this is where nearly all the magic with research happens to go over the basic ui of it you can see here your rank in the knowledge index this is completely broken and you can be like number 10 and it will still rank you number one because it only counts very specific technologies and honestly i've never found that it updates correctly ever so pretty much ignore this Next, you have your queued research. As you see, we have one research queued up, two research, and our total research slots. This is determined by the amount of research centers you have, which you can kind of see by going to build one. Here you can see, oh, we have three and they're all active, but we have four slots. That's because every nation has one base research slot, whether or not they have a research center. That ensures even the poorest nations can always be researching things. And naturally, if you'd want to get more research slots to research more things at once, you would just build things by selecting the research center and then you could place it wherever on the map or let the AI place it for you. These are very expensive to make, they require a lot of industry goods, and they take a very long time to make. So keep in mind this is an investment, and sometimes it might just be easier to take one over. But this is not a strategy guide. Next we have the known technologies down here, if you click on this you can actually look at all the technologies that you already have, in case you're curious if you have one and you can even double click it to see the actual sheet of it which you would be able to preview also while going to research it in the first place which if you did want to research a new tech you would head up here to the next little beaker symbol and here you go you have all the different research trees you even have buttons for all your designs you can expand a category and double click on one to view the technology and what it does for you you hit this little plus if you want to add it to the research. If it's yellow, it means you're not yet researching it. If you have enough slots, it means you have to wait till the next day for it to start. If the color is red, that's just because you cannot actually research it. For example, if you went to research multiple vaccines right now and you're missing the prerequisite immunization advances, it would be red to indicate that you can't start researching this now regardless, but it would also queue up the prerequisite for you. Before we get into the nitty gritty of what you should research and when, we'll just keep talking about the basics. Finish going through the buttons here, there is also technology races, this little button down here, it pulls up the four technology races, the race for the bomb, the atom bomb, the space race for the cold war, the internet race for the late cold war, and man on Mars for modern day. These have an effect mainly on sphere diplomacy in that they will gain you influence, but for the most part, they're only really good at keeping track of where you are compared to another superpower if you're playing one of the main two nations in a scenario. And finally, there's the cabinet button. To see your cabinet minister here, you could pull up all the cabinet priorities if you want your AI to take care of the research for you. You could also lock him off from the spending and picking new research altogether down here. And then we have research efficiency and project development. So now, these are very important things and we'll go over what they are. So project development is the spending of the required cost it takes to research something. So if you hover over basic land launched rockets here, you will see that the research cost, which if I double click it, we can also find it here, is this value right here. And my project development is my spending of that value on a daily basis, mind you. This is the total cost to research the entire thing in 180 to 192 days. That's the total cost. Project development is more of like a daily cost. You can lower it if you need to save money, but this will slow down your research because you're no longer hitting your maximum potential of it. Next is research efficiency. This is how, well, you know, efficient you are at the actual researching 
process. If you see, there is a time remaining and there's a research time, 180 to 192 days. That's because you cannot predict the very day that you will actually figure out how to do something. Your researchers will simply give you an estimate and say, hey, this is roughly when we think we can get this done. The lower your research efficiency, the wider the range and the higher the time as well, the higher your research efficiency, the smaller the range, and the lower the total time. 100% is of course just the best balance for money that you put into it and research time you get out of it, but you can drag this all the way up to 200% which will help your research time, maybe not enough to justify the price, so it's a good thing to look at if you want to cut any spending or if you have excess spending lying around. Research can also be canceled, for example, just press the X or paused here, now you see it's paused, so it's yellow because it's not going, but I can resume it whenever I want. That's good for organizing this tab because it automatically organizes it for you. When you add research in, for example, if I just start tossing Ah, a bunch of research in here. It's going to add it in whatever order it wants. But let's say, see, we have four slots. That means we can research up to here. But let's say I want improved monoplane airframes first, but I don't want to get rid of all these other things. I don't want to take them out. I want them to research. Well, I could temporarily get rid of them or pause the helicopter one and then unpause. We wait for the next day for everything to start. And you see, I got monoplane airframes in there. Helicopter was not put in there. So we will resume and then when a slot frees up, it is the next one and it will queue up next. If you do have excess research centers that you are not using, according to the manual, they will contribute some of their efficiency to speeding up the other researchers that you are currently going after, but they are also very expensive, so I would recommend against using them for this purpose and instead powering down any that you are not using to save money, unless you're just really swimming in it. Now for the researchers themselves and what you should research and why. So of course, it depends on what your goals and your play style are, so I'll do my best to give hints while also just describing which each category can do for you. I picked World War II because World War II is honestly the best place for any new player to start playing this game and the researches are easier to digest because there's less of them overall that you have to look at because the tree branches the further and further you get down the line and in fact while there is no way to see future technologies except to see what techs a tech leads to and then just follow that and see where you get there is a tech tree on the internet that is very very large and i will actually put that in the description i'll put it at the very top if you want to see the tech tree of this game and how massive it is across all the eras for yourself but to go over the categories warfare should be obvious these are your warfare techs they're the most relevant techs for actually fighting wars. They are not all the techs for fighting wars. There are others in other categories, but this is where most of them are gonna be. Here's where you'll find things like tank tech and where you'll find the equivalent for ships. This will unlock the ability to make new units. Also military production techs, unlock the ability to make new units. Very important technologies and anything like that, such as armor designs level two, which is a non-tradable. These should be absolute priorities if you are trying to stay ahead of the curve Look at how many designs this alone unlocks and look what it leads to. Tank Tech 39, Armor Improvements 3. Look at all the tanks and stuff this leads to. If you're trying to maintain an advanced army that has good offensive capabilities, these are the techs you want to be going for first and foremost. But there are not just techs that lead to designs like what we're looking at here. See, here's a submarine equivalent. All the Navy and land stuff tends to be here. There are also prerequisite techs. That's how I refer to them, such as things like metal alloy airframes and carrier hydraulic catapults. These are techs that mainly exist to lead you to other techs that have designs and stuff you want. When you click on them, you might see, well, what the fuck? This doesn't give me any designs. This doesn't give me any effects. Why the fuck should I research this? Because it will lead to something that has something you want. It's like a required thing along the way. And then finally, there are technologies like light machine guns, which are just here to give you bonuses. For example, ground attack values up to 10%. This means that these LMGs, this technology right here, will actually boost your ground attack values by up to an entire 10%. That is massive. There are also technologies in here that will actually upgrade your garrisons 
And then if you get ahead on that, your defensive garrisons could be way better than anyone else's in the world. If you're into warmongering and doing war and having short term to mid term unit design gains over your opponents, this is a good tree to focus, but it does not work independently. Next up we have transportation. Transportation has a little bit of everything too. So as we see, we have improved turbine engines. This is very clearly a prerequisite tech and it leads to another and another, but you see, these lead to things like Air Force Production 43, where you get the equivalent of what we saw with the tanks and the submarines in warfare. The air-based techs generally tend to be under transportation. There are some you need under warfare, such as improved monoplane airframes. As we can see, it's a prerequisite tech, but it also leads to designs. But you'll find some transportation techs have quite the same thing primarily for air. See, aircraft construction too, all that stuff. But there's also other purposes here as well. Mid-air refueling. This is a very important tech that leads to the ability to refuel planes in mid-air. Planes that have the capability to refuel in mid-air. Not all planes will have that capability just for example. If you go further into transportation, you also find things like early guidance systems that give atomic bomb up to 3%. That basically means it's going to modify your race for the bomb progress, and that means it is a tech that's actually required for acquiring the atomic bomb. Those techs are spread throughout a lot of the trees here. So you have different paths here. It's Again, mainly required to go into transportation if you want better air or you're trying to unlock a lot of prerequisite techs. Science is also filled with prerequisite techs. You can see digit circuit principles here. Atomic bomb up to 3%, very important, right? Early computing, that's another one. But there's also other things here, like you can lead all the way to uh, fluoridated water supply, but you see this is in society. Some of this has been the case as we've gone. The thing is these texts all interweave all these trees and they lead into another. You had to go through science to get a society tech that gave you a healthcare rating up to 2%. They all rely on each other in some way. So it makes more sense to find a tech you want and then just research whatever you need to get it. Which for example, if I wanted that, I would just hit research and everything, as you can see, required to get there has been queued up. It won't necessarily do it in the smartest order that way, but it has been queued up. And as I remove these things, you'll see them go back. Technology is probably up there in how important it is to focus on as warfare, because there's a lot of really important things here. Namely, improved power grid, which if you're in modern day, you probably don't have to deal with. But this is just a tech tree, which starts at one, which every time you go up and it goes up four times, you can get a 50% bonus to the output of all power generation. There are modern equivalent techs to this, but these are simple. These take fucking forever to research and they are very, very important because they will save you a lot of money on building power plants. So very important bonus based techs here. But there are also technologies that unlock, you know, buildings and other things such as mobile steel barges unlocks the oceanic complex, which is like an industry complex, but you build it on the ocean and underwater petroleum extraction, which allows you to make the oil derrick on that complex. Very important if you have access to oil off your coast, but not oil on land and oil is a problem for you. But there are also prerequisite texts like applied radio detection and again they interweave with the other trees quite a lot now the last two categories are a lot simpler medical and society while there are some prerequisite texts here they mainly rely on the prior three to get most of their prerequisites and they mainly exist to give you bonuses for example these antimicrobial drugs healthcare rating up to two percent this means that if you look at your budget and the amount you're spending on healthcare. For example, with no techs, if I spent the recommended amount, the rating would eventually hit 100%. But now, if I got that tech, and that was the only tech I had that boosted it, that same spending would get me 102%. This can allow you to save money to keep hitting 100% by lowering what you spend, or it can enable you to get over 100% rather efficiently with the same amount of spending whereas trying to go beyond the recommended spending will pretty much double your costs but not really get you too much more in terms of percent maybe a couple more percent points that one tech is far more efficient at accomplishing the same thing and then the same thing goes for society techs modern highways transportation improvements up to 15 percent you know urban renewal infrastructure rating up to five percent so same thing infrastructure spending 
5% improvement for the same spending. And that is assuming you are at the recommended or below. Again, if you go over the recommended, it will always just get less efficient. And that's all the research categories and how they work. The last thing there really is to mention is that there are designs and they also take up a slot. So if you wanna research your designs, you're gonna to have to be competing with time to research your own text. As for this, it's really up to you what you will research. I will eventually make a unit guide on how to micromanage them and tell you like what they're the best at and what they're good for and you can make decisions in that guide. But some of these things take forever. For example, capital ships quite regularly take an entire year to research one. Like the build time is usually also the research time. And so imagine taking up an entire slot for a year to research one thing that is not an actual research. So you might not want to do that. That's where it might be better to just say, hey, go to my neighbor, like France, buy technology from them for money, which is based on how much they like you. And the price is also just based on how old the technology is and what value the devs have assigned to it. But same thing with designs. You can also go and buy their designs. Like, oh man, I guess I need some new recon. Let me go buy this. And then you can buy that from them. And you can also sell technology and unit designs to other countries as well, as well as just raw units. And finally, if you are way behind on tech, occasionally the world market, the United Nations, the League of Nations, it really depends what era you're on for how the game refers to it, but they will offer you a trade in your trade window up here, and they will try to give or sell you a technology for a good price that they determine you need in order to catch up with everybody else. You will not see anything like that if you are further ahead of the tech game than most other countries though. And if you look at a tech, you'll see the year that it came out, the closer you are or beyond this year, the easier it becomes to research and the cheaper it becomes to research or buy. The further away it is, the more expensive and harder it becomes to acquire. There's also one other method you could use to try to acquire new research, but it's very particular. You can have spies go to espionage in the state tab, uh, assign spies to map for a mission, pick espionage itself, this is the mission you want, and then you would go, for example, to Paris, or you could pick any place on the map that has a research center, assign spies here. And if you do that, you have a chance, based on your spending and the location of the research center and what's on it, to actually steal technologies from another country that you don't have. But there's a lot of things that can make that harder. For example, enemy spies working counter intel. If there's military on a location where the research center is, then that would also make it harder. So you wanna be very, very careful with this because you can accidentally get yourself invaded if you're doing that. But that is technically another way to acquire research. And that's pretty much everything that I can think of to say about research and how it works, how you get it, and what I would recommend focusing on and what there is to focus on. If you guys have any other ideas for guides on SRU, please leave them in the comments below. Big thank you to all the financial supporters who make these videos possible. Their names will appear on the screen at the end of the video. If you would like to join them and also receive such a weekly shout out among other benefits, you can find all the relevant links in the description below. And for now, thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.